All right, guys. Hi, hello. I uh, hope you're all well today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're moving on to our learning objective number three. I would uh, ask that you guys grab out your notebooks. We're going to have two slides of information today. And then uh, I've got a couple of things that are 100% optional. Again, not something that has to be done, but I would suggest doing it. If we were together in class, you would have to do it, which I, again, lament in this virtual world, but it is what it is. Uh, then at the end, I've got some work to be completed. Uh, again, you guys finished up or should have finished up your spec stuff, uh, your spec table on Friday, got that turned into turnitin.com. Uh, there is a new item that is going to be a available for you to work on pretty much over the course of the whole week. It's not due until right before spring break. Uh, but again, you can start it now and then it won't be quite so much work as we go forward. Uh, but we're going to dive right in. So with your notebooks out, we're going to talk about Hinduism. So Hinduism is one of the oldest, and actually, again, according to historians, is the oldest religion to exist uh, at this moment in time. Uh, again, it is a religious belief system that originated in India, weirdly enough. That's why we're talking about it. Uh, so we're going to go through kind of the basics uh, of what Hinduism is and what the core beliefs are uh, about this process or this particular approach um, overall. So here we go. Uh, so with Hinduism, uh, this it all originates from the idea of Brahman. Uh, Brahman is a single force in the universe. It is the ultimate reality. And a lot of Hinduism is quite foreign to you guys, I'm very aware, so you just have to kind of go along for the ride with me. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, those people who are Hindu, they believe that they have a responsibility to their individual self. Uh, within each person is something referred to as Atman. Uh, to seek to know the universe, to become one with the universe, to understanding the why do things happen and accepting the why the things happen, uh, this whole process overall. Again, it's a, definitely a, a big a belief system, that's for sure. How is it that you get to know Brahman? Uh, so in Hinduism, we're going to see that the, a practice is developed, and that practice is something that some of you guys may have heard of before, and that's yoga. Uh, so yoga is a obviously a physical process of trying to become one with the universe, with what is around you. Uh, it's a method of training that was designed to try and merge with Brahman. Um, what if yoga is really focused on is the idea of creating harmony between your physical and, of course, your mental state, um, that once you reach a certain level within your yoga practice, you leave behind the connections to what is around you, and you sort of join Brahman, uh, join the universe on this higher level of understanding in this dreamless sleep meditation, uh, the ability to kind of disconnect from what is around you and to physically just be within yourself. Uh, of course, that is some very, again, top level yoga practice there for you guys. You just think of it as an exercise. Uh, but it is definitely something that was created as a religious practice uh, in something that again, to this day, it has a lot of connections to Hinduism overall. Uh, the other thing that is important to understand about Hinduism, like many of our ancient religions, is it's polytheistic. Uh, there are thousands, and I'm not again, over-exaggerating, there are thousands of different gods within the Hindu faith. There are three major gods and goddesses, though, um, because if you, when you were telling people about becoming a Hindu, and you tell them there's thousands of gods to choose from, that's a little bit overwhelming. So to make it more approachable, uh, the Hindu faith really focuses in on three major uh, gods and goddesses. You've got Brahma, which is the creator, and obviously connected to Brahman, uh, Vishnu, the preserver, and then Shiva, the destroyer. Uh, again, the different look and 
aspects or parts of life. Uh, again, you've got creation, you've got the present, and then you've got the destruction or the end. Uh, so it's kind of a, a full circle idea overall. Uh, the religion to this day is still widely practiced in India. Uh, it's the majority religion in India at this moment in time, though it does kind of go through some ups and downs, which we'll talk about uh, before the this is all said and done. Um, so that's the overarching description of Hinduism. Within Hinduism, there are some specific principles, just like with Islam and Christianity and Judaism, which we talked about, specific things uh, about them that make this religion different or unique to others. Uh, the first major principle of Hinduism is the idea of reincarnation. Uh, the Hindu people do not believe that there is a, a beyond necessarily. And it, it, the Atman, again, your individual self, your soul is reborn into a different form after you die. Uh, my, this right here really helps to justify the caste system. Uh, remembering that the caste system is the social breakdown of Indian society. Again, the Brahmins at the top. And again, Brahmin, that should make sense because Brahmin is going to be the universal uh, idea of Hinduism. Uh, so the religious leaders who are at the top, named after him, uh, and then all the way down to the bottom. And reincarnation is something that, uh, of course, it has an impact. If you believe in reincarnation, the life you're living right now, it's going to hopefully motivate you to act and behave a certain way. Um, and through your actions and through your decision, you are going to either gain or lose karma. Uh, karma is, again, something you've probably heard of before, like, oh, again, I've got such good karma, or man, that's that's bad karma right there. Uh, karma is is the, your actions and how that determines how you'll be reborn in the next life. So if you're very good and you do good things, you're getting good positive karma, which will bump you up in the caste system in your next reincarnation. Uh, if you're a bad person and you make bad decisions, you have bad karma karma and that'll push you down. Um, when it comes right down to it, and how do people make good and bad decisions? Well, that comes back to this idea of dharma. Uh, dharma is the divine law. Uh, again, this is a kind of a, in the same line as Sharia law with our Islamic faith. Uh, it requires people to do their duty, do the responsibilities that they have, and it depends on your current status in society aka the caste system again. <laughs> you're seeing here that the caste system, whatever caste you're born into, there are certain expectations of you of what you're supposed to do. Um, and if you do not fulfill the dharma, if you do not fulfill that role in society, then you could get bad karma and come back lower. Or if you push yourself to work beyond, work above, then you could come back in a new form of something much better. That's all the notes I have for you. It's Hinduism is complex. It is a difficult religion to sum up very quickly. Uh, I'm hoping that the big ideas here, though, that you're understanding them as individual pieces. Uh, I have two video clips, which will be posted alongside my telling of this uh, lecture, both are optional. They're just there if you have time and you are wondering more about Hinduism. Um, one is a kind of overarching what is Hinduism video. And again, it's just there to give you some extra. Uh, it's not required. It's about 20 minutes long. So it's kind of a, a little bit much. I wouldn't suggest doing that over something else. But if you have time and you're interested in learning more about Hinduism, please watch it. Uh, the other one, which I hope you guys do, uh, which is what we would do in class, is there is a yoga pose video uh, so that you can start to see some of the different types of yoga poses that are, again, originating from the original Hindu faith, uh, but now are being incorporated into a different kind of aspect of life. Uh, give them a watch and see what's what. Uh, practice a little bit of yoga. It's very relaxing. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, beyond that, <laughs> you have some work to do over the course of the week. Uh, tomorrow, there'll be some information about Buddhism. Uh, again, the other major religion founded in India. Uh, and uh, you'll see posted to classroom that there is a 
worksheet uh, that has got to do with Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam, the three major religions that influence India as it develops. Uh, half of the worksheet has got a map with some questions on it. The other half is another little table. Um, you're going to submit it by the end of the school day on Thursday. That's the 9th, not the 8th. Man, I'm really bad with the dates uh, in this virtual world. Uh, so Thursday, the 9th, the day before your spring break starts. The other thing, and I know I said this, uh, that, that I wasn't going to be doing any checks of the, the study aid, but changed my mind. The other teachers in world are going to be checking uh, that study aid stuff is getting started or at least finished by the end of this school week, which is on Thursday. You will have covered 18 terms. That's more than half of all of the terms on this uh, study aid overall. I want to see that at least 15 are done. I know that's kind of a big ask, but if you've been taking my advice you already would have some finish because last week we covered a bunch of different stuff. Uh, again, if you're having trouble with any of that, please let me know. I can help you with everything that you might need. Uh, the work to be completed by Friday the 24th, which is the Friday after break, that's still right now scheduled to be the end of our unit. So please make sure that you are working on your study aid. I don't want you to have any homework over break. So get this done now. <laughs> uh, again, it'll make life a lot simpler in the long run. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day and uh, you'll hear from me again tomorrow.